replacing the upper control arms on a Tesla Model X or Model S. So if you're here, the chances are you've probably got a, uh, a squeak coming from your upper control arms. That could be on the near side or the off side. Um, and I'm gonna show you today how to replace them. Uh, now there are some people out there that will say you can regrease them. And I've heard this has worked with, with pretty good results. Um, for me, replacement was, was the easiest option. Um, the upper control arms actually, they're surprisingly cheap from Tesla. So if you go onto eBay or, or uh, AutoDoc or any of the other places, you'll find that they have upper control arms and they're actually more expensive than the Tesla ones. So I've purchased from Tesla a new upper control arm. Um, this was £85, pounds, um, including VAT, and it's basically a metal top that's pressed into a plastic bottom. Um, and it's this outer ball drain here, which is the one that starts to squeak. So what happens is they start to dry out, um, and this will ultimately result in the squeak that you hear. So that's why if you re-grease them, sometimes it will resolve the issue. In my case, replacement is going to be the better option. So I've already replaced the driver's side one. This is the replacement of the passenger side one today. Um, I should have done both at the same time, but I, I didn't ultimately. And yeah, this one went about five or six months after the first one went. So uh, I'll talk you through the process of replacing these. You only need basic tools. I will be doing this on a two post ramp today. You can do it on a jack. Um, so the first step to do this is to get the car and put it into jack mode. And that tells the air suspension. Uh, that you're about to lift the car up. Once the car's in jack mode, you can lift it. Um, I've already removed the wheel bolts and the inner arch iron lining, but I'll quickly show you what is needed. Okay, on. so this is my Model X, it's a 2018. And the process is the same across all of the Model Xs and Model Ss, um, not for three or Y, unfortunately, they are slightly different. Um, but this is the passenger side of my Model X. So what you can see is I've already removed the, the inner arch lining, which is down here. So in order to do that, you'll need a trim remover tool like this. And you'll also need a 10 millimeter socket bit. So there are two 10 millimeter bolts and the rest of them are these pop clips. So what you do is you put your screwdriver or your trim removal tool into the little gap there, pop up the middle and then the whole clip will pull out. Now on these, there was a 10 mil just here, a 10 mil just here, and then there was various pops. So there was one here, there was one in the middle here, various, so there's three or four across the bottom of there, and three or three across the bottom of here. Once you've removed all of those, um, the easiest way to do it is to unclip the inner lining off here and push it in, and then you can get it out from this arched carrier here. And then once you've got that out, um, this upper arm, which is what we're replacing here, so this is the bit where, the, where it's gone dry, um, you'll need to remove this bolt and then there are two bolts one in here and one in here now these two need to be accessed from the front so when i bring the car down i'll show you but what first thing i would do is to remove this in order to do that you'll need two a 15 millimeter for this end and a t50 for this end now what you can do is hold the t50 you can fully remove this because this this uh upper control arm won't come out until this bolt is removed and I'll show you on here why. So as you can see there there's a indentation in, in that up control arm. So as that slides in the bolt will slide into that gap and prevent this from coming up or down uh, until you pull the bolt. Once you pull the bolt out the arm will will release from the the main part of the car. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna quickly remove this bolt now. And then the next thing you'll see, we'll start to remove the, the front and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so we're now in the, the front. Um, in order to remove those bolts that are on the top over here, we need to remove all of these plastic shroudings. We also need to move the actual front compartment itself. Um, so these plastic coverings, they do just pull up. So they're quite simple to get off. Just place them down. Um, these ones again, much the same. They just pull up, and removed. This one is the same. So again, just pull up, pull them out, and then the front one is the same. Now some of these do have double-sided tape that stick them, so they are a bit hard to pull up. But they should be able to just remove it like that. 
what you then need to do is to pull off the rubber that goes around and now the front liner we're ready to come out what you need to do first of all is push this forward and there are two clips in here that hold the light in place if you push that down you better pull the clip out like so push this one down pull it out now this lining is now ready to be pulled out of the car so i'm just going to quickly do that and then we'll copy back okay and now we have that removed we need to remove the actual plastic piece of the front so what we need to do is remove all of the bolts that go around here so there are plenty one's missing from one there but there's plenty of bolts if you remove all of these using a 10 mil the front will then lift out so i'll quickly remove those and then we'll be on to the next Okay, so as you can see, I've removed all of the bolts that go all the way around this. And this front is now loose. One thing to worth is worth noting, it's worth pushing these through them holes because otherwise they will catch as you try and lift this up. So as you can see, it's now loose. We'll be able to lift this out. It's quite difficult with one hand. Now that's out of the car, we can remove this. This is the, the filter that does the, I think it's a, for the um, hazard mode. That can be removed. This is where you then see your 12 volt battery um, and everything else that you need. So in order to get to this, the bolts that you need are underneath here. And in order to get to these bolts, we need to remove the two 10 mils from here and there's a 10 mil behind that as well. And then that moves out, out of the way, which will give us access to the, the bolts that are here. So I'll quickly remove those 10 mils. Okay, I've now removed these two bolts here. The other bolt is, I can't see it, but it's just behind, there's a piece of, cable there and there's a bolt hole just there so you move that there's also a pop clip here which is the same as the ones that we used um, in the wheel arch so once you pop that off that becomes loose you're then able to move this out of the way so i'm just going to tuck this up a little bit like so and pull this rubber thing back and you see here this is the back of the upper control arm. So there's the bolt for this one. Uh, and then the other bolt is accessible via the hole just here. So the other bolt, let me get a torch. I'll be able to show you. So the remaining bolt we need to remove is just there. So it's this one just up here. So that is enough now to be able to remove that. One other thing to worth noting is this here is your level sensor. So that is what adjusts the ride height. And on the back of this is, I believe, an eight mil. So you need to undo the eight mil and remove this before doing anything. If this breaks, your ride height adjustment uh, won't be able to self level. So yeah, there's, a, I believe it's an eight mil, but I'll confirm in a moment off the back of there, which will then pop this off, um, ready to put onto the new one. Okay, so just to confirm, um, the bolts here, the one on the front and back, they are 15 mil. And the, the bolt that holds this level sensor in, that is a 10 mil, not an 8 mil. Um, so what we're going to do now is, the first thing to do before you release those back two, is to release this. Um, once you release this, this arm will pop up and it will give us the, the default setting for the height that we need the car to be at. Um, so I'm just going to lift the car up a little bit. We'll remove this and I'll show you what I mean for the next part. Okay, so I've raised the car a bit now. Um, so what we're going to have to do is we have to get this out of here. You could either get uh, the Torx bit on the end and, and drill it out, or uh, if you give it a little knock on the back, it should release um, the upper arm, the upper control arm. 
So I was going to give it a quick knock with a hammer. Okay, so I've removed this bolt now. As you can see, uh, as soon as I release this, you'll note the arm will spring up to its natural position. The, the lower part's held in place by everything else, the, the um, anti-roll bar link, etc., holds in place. So the reason this is important is this is the default position of the control arm. So when the new one goes in, in order to prevent stress and strain on these two inner bushings, we need to make sure we get the new arm to be roughly in the same position this one is now. Now you can mark on the body roughly where this is, or the way I prefer to do it is to measure the gap between here and here, or here and there, or any, any two points. If you, as long as you measure a reference point as to where roughly this is sitting, um, so that we don't end up, you know, for example, screwing it in here, tying it up. So, you know, the, the natural resting position of this is is there. That's where you want to get it back to. And the reason why this is not working and squeaking is because of that. There's there's nothing in there. The ball joint's gone completely loose. The inners are okay. It's all it's normally the outer one. Um, so what I'm going to do now, we've released that, is I'm going to release the 10 mil off of this fully. I'm then going to release the two 15 mil bolts. So one from here and then one from in the front area and that will then release the arm. Uh, so that's the next stage we'll see. Okay, so I've just removed the, uh, the wide height sensor. Um, it's worth noting that the outer, the outer nut on that is 10. You can also get a nine mil spanner on the inner part because it will twist. So you get a nine mil on this side and a 10 mil on that side and you'll be able to release that from the body like so. Uh, so as a next stage, 15 mils off both the backs and the arm will come out. Okay, um, there's one thing I'd like to point out for anyone that's gonna do this. So I've removed the 15 mil nut from this side, as you can see there, so the cable's in there. That's the, the bolt there. Um, on this side, so as you try and remove this 15 mil nut, I hope you can see that the nut will hit the body, which will stop it from being able to be come out. So as you pull, if you pull the arm so that you're pulling this one forward, it will tilt the angle of this bolt slightly, which will clear the space of a little bit of wiggling to get that bolt out. So that one is now out. Which means that arm is now completely loose. So I'm gonna use a pry bar just to pry this out. Uh, as you see, that bolt, it's still in place, but it's completely removed. Uh, it's, it's not in there anymore. So there's just some wiring behind this that's stopping that bolt from actually coming all the way out, which is fine. So I'm gonna pry that out now, and then uh, we'll be on to fitting the new one. Okay, so the old arm is now out. The new one's going in. So refitting is uh, it's, yeah, reverse of removal. So what you have to do is get the arms in. You might have to lever them down because getting these bushes to sit all the way down in line with the bolts is is not always easy. Um, so what I do first is I'll get the, the arm down. I'll then adjust this back up to our reference point where it came off, like so. Um, and as you see, the end on this is much more, much more sturdy than the one we took off. Uh, so yeah, I'll quickly get them down, get the bolts roughly, uh, get a couple of threads in, and then I'll be back. Okay, so we have the upper control arm in. Um, I'm happy with the height of that, that that is where the other one was. Um, these rear two bolts, they are tightened to 68 newton meters. So the one in there, the one on this side, this front one tightens to 60. Now getting this front one here, to 68 will be easy. Getting that back one, very, very difficult because there's not much space to put anything in there. Um, so I'm probably gonna have to try to tighten to, try and match the tightness on this one basically, uh, just by hand. And then the front one here at 60 new meters, that part will be easy as well. So I'm just gonna quickly hand tighten these all up. Uh, I'll pop this. So this, if you've got uh, like a, a lifter or a jack or an extra person, you can just pull that down and, and push that in. Um, it is easier if you have a second person or if you have, um, yeah, like something to jack this arm up with. 
just to make just to make sure they do meet together nicely. Okay, so my arm's all back in now. So this front bolt is torqued up to 60. The rears are torqued up to 68. I was able to get the torque wrench onto this um, with a flexible adapter and the torque wrench in a 15 mil. So 68, 68, the ride height sensor's back on. So that's a, the 10 mil on the back of there. Uh, and so from this part of the car we are, we're done. All we need is the wheel arch lines to go in. What I'm gonna do now though, is I'm gonna go to the inside of the car. And I'm gonna start putting back together some of the stuff we took apart earlier. And then we can start putting the arch liner back in, putting the front back in. And this upper control arm, will be finished.